I'm joined now by Jonathan Broder. He's a writer for the news magazine and Newsweek. Jonathan, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. So U.S. tariffs clearly driving China and Europe closer together. But give us the bigger picture here. What does it mean for the EU? What does it mean for China? And what does it mean for the United States? Well, the economies of China and the EU are, um, there's enormous potential for them. The Chinese uh, GNP is about $10 trillion a year. The EU is 15 trillion, uh, at least. Um, so there's, a, and they already have a, a roughly 600 billion dollars worth of two-way trade already. That's with, that's just bilateral trade with all the problems that they have. So if they can get by some of those problems, there's enormous potential. Now these two uh, entities are coming together uh, in an attempt to. Uh, have a free trade agreement, or at least an investment agreement, at the, as a first stage, at a time when the United States is pulling back from uh, free trade. Uh, it refused to join the uh, Pacific, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, basically ceding that territory to China. Um, it has uh, slapped sanctions on $50 billion worth of Chinese goods, and it's considering another $450 billion worth of Chinese goods, putting, putting tariffs on those. Does this mean more isolation for the United States economically? Yes, in a word. Uh, you know, the, the, the mantra in the Trump administration is America first, but it's increasingly looking like America alone. And as far as areas of agreement, there are obviously things EU and China uh, see eye to eye on, but there are also areas of disagreement where EU finds itself more aligned with the U.S. position. For example, allegations of technology transfers, intellectual uh, property theft. Are these areas where the two sides can narrow the gap? I think they can. I think that the, uh, the top priority right now is an investment treaty. So one of the items that's on the agenda is uh, 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 delineating areas where uh, there can be market access. Uh, of course, the Europeans want lots of market access, and the Chinese want lots of market access. The differences, though, are uh, deal with um, uh, European concerns that uh, many of these areas where they'd like to get into are restricted by either uh, domestic development plans uh, or by tariffs, uh, by protect protectionism. And the uh, Chinese are concerned that their entry into the European market will be restricted because of many of the things that America is concerned about. Uh, Jonathan, it seems much of the world is in a trade, I don't want to use the word war, but perhaps a trade dispute, a trade conflict. Uh, putting aside agreements between China and in the EU, you've got Canada, Mexico, EU, uh, China, basically they all have issues with the United States. Right. So what are the global implications, for example, with U.S. businesses like Harley-Davidson? The global implications are a trade war. I mean, we're heading, it seems to me, that we're heading towards a trade war. It's sort of very similar but to what's happening in the 30s. But do you think there's going to be any kind of resolution or agreement before that key July 6th deadline, at least for China and the United States? I don't think so. I think there's going to have to be a lot of pain before... Uh, the sides pull back from this precipice. You asked about Harley-Davidson. Mm -hmm. Harley-Davidson, because it faced tariffs on its motorcycles going over to Europe, is now going to be moving its factory to Europe, which means loss of jobs and in the Harley United Davidson States. And Harley-Davidson may not just be the beginning for, yes. for so many of these U.S. companies. All right, Jonathan Broder, thank you so much.